Greetings, ladies and Mandeljets, and welcome to this latest episode of uh, Tales, Tales from, from Outer from space. Out space. Out space, where I take a space-related story from around the internet and read it out loud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Please don't forget to do the usual YouTube gumph, because if you don't, the nanite swarms will steal your other sock. But more importantly, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I'd quickly like to thank the following Tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you very much. Story number one. We leave none behind. Not even the dead. Written by Cow Vines. Dog Tags. They were a uniquely human concept. When they first joined the intergalactic war, most combatants snorted some sort of trap. That was until the humans began to ask for them back, along with the bodies, if we had them. A way to remember their fallen soldiers, have something left of them. Like most things humans, it was strangely beautiful, and honorable for most, even causing some other nations to begin to adopt the practice. Some others didn't adopt it, however, and also didn't return the dog tags themselves. They soon learned the most important lessons of humans. They will leave none behind, not even their dead. The ship slid into real space as it got into system, softly heading towards the planet, dropping off cargo it held. The large cargo ship landed with a soft puff of dirt and debris. Large freezer boxes were taken off and moved into the facility, still visible on the next. The small pieces of metal adorned the dead. Most put into storage, as a few of the bodies were taken out as tests were performed on them. The dog tags were those taken away, were taken off and put into storage containers. The workers left the room. As visible to no one, a small yellow dot appeared for a moment at the base of a dog tag as if we were left in a slightly warmer part of the base. The signal was received. Seven or so pings at the same place as the soldier behind the monitor scrambled for his communicator, sending the information to the higher-ups, and then routing instructions to the ship captains. Bring our people home! There were five captains picked for the job, mostly annoyed at being awoken. Then reading the message... Rousing their crew, the ships were silently loaded up and sent off to the system within a couple hours. A process normally taking a little under a day. Not for the lack of readiness, the humans on board were more than ready. A loud tear was almost audible as five ships crashed into the system, precious time taken to figure out what they were. This was a secret deep in the heart of the Kozard's territory. It was nearly impossible for anyone to come here, much less know how to get here, even. Then a small sound arose from the storage, a shaken worker being prodded in to figure out what it was. Coming across the small piece of metal as he brought it out for all to listen. Dear fallen siblings, we are here, was heard from the small device. Then hell erupted in the skies. The token security ships, mostly there for the accidental intrusions from their own citizens, were woefully outmatched. Ships dozens of times their size, leaving no room for escape between precise lines of concentrated fire. A few distress signals barely making it up before being brutally cut off. The small formations of soldiers and equipment on the surface of the planet were immediately obliterated from the skies. Anything even resembling the form of defense was hit with layers of fire from the sky, different layers of bombs crashing upon them. Large ships, around the size of the one cargo ship, now laying in a flaming ruin on the landing pad next to them, as soldiers poured out of it, marching from the ships as they poured into the vicinity, weapons like shrapnel grenades being used with prejudice as every room and floor that put up resistance was quickly silenced. This squad came across a small lab on the way to the signal origins, ignoring the cowering scientists as they cleared the room and moved into the clean chamber, finding on the table a short man, pieces of his body missing, 
one of the soldiers, grabbing the nearest scientist and lifting him up. Did you do this? She asked in a cracked, angry voice. It was on orders. We were told, the alien began, as the other arm of the woman put a pistol to the stomach and fired. The other soldiers giving the same greeting to the other scientists in the room. The first soldier moving back into the room and closing the fallen soldier's eyes as I loaded him into the freezer unit and began moving him back to the ship. The ships left the atmosphere, leaving a small clearing where the bodies of the planet's soldiers were left covered, rubble and scarred earth all that was the remaining of the rest of the planet. The fleet blasted into system, following the trail left by distress signals as they navigated through tens of floating empty ships. Finally, they arrived in orbit of the planet, the sheer destruction too much to land for most ships within the fleet. Shuttles being dispatched as one landed on a small field, holding the bodies of a couple hundred security and staff stationed. Behind each of the bodies were a small stick holding up their helmets or headwear. A small carved stone sitting in front of all of them. We will never leave our own. End of story. Story number two. I can't speak for those who died before. Written by Glitchkey. Normally, I said, as I kicked the door down in a shower of sparks and shrapnel, I would recite a litany of names right now. A flash of metal shone ahead of me, automated defenses whirring to life after centuries rotting in their casings. But you've taken more names than I have breath. I raised my hand, and a sphere of crimson warded off the hail of bullets. Bits of wall falling to the ground around me. Then the last of the worlds that I've taken. The dry voice spoke, garbled as the speakers sparked and died. That's what the others normally do. I grabbed a robot, a portable little gunbot, and shoved it through the wall. No, I don't have that right. I can't speak for those who've died before. A knife sentinel was next followed by a cleaning droid that had the misfortune of being bought by the wrong owner. Laughter crackled in and out with the flickering lights. And yet you challenge me! Door slammed open, the hall darkened by shadows beyond. More robots poured through, sentinels and watchdogs and rattling handcrafted piles of scrap. You will die here! All right, I said. A flick on my wrist, and they all fell slack, the air around me practically dancing to the interference. Your citadel will be my grave, after I've done what I've come for. They crunched and squealed as I waded through, heedless of their presence and its inability to slow me down or upset my footing. The speakers were silent for a moment, the crackling of electricity my only company as I trekked through the winding corridors. Worlds will burn for this, I chuckled. They'll burn anyways. I punched through the wall next to me as the hall shuddered and went dark. A thunderous crash reverberated from every surface. A collapse far behind me. And what do you hope to accomplish? The voice was quicker now, higher. I could hear his shallow breathing if I stopped long enough to listen. The goal I've worked on for longer than I can rightly remember. One I took up on myself when you sacked my home. I tore open the door and there it was in front of me. There he was in front of me. What are you? He asked. He leaned back from his desk, screens dark and flickering along the wall in front of him. Once I would have given you a name, I grabbed him dragged him from his seat and threw him to the floor. I gave that up with my humanity. I stomped and crushed him through the deck plating into the corridor below. He leaned against the wall behind him, a smile playing on the edge of his lips. That won't work, you know. Grabbing his head, I dragged him up and stared into his eyes. I lied earlier. I can speak for the worlds. Oh... He smirked. I've killed so many. Refresh my memory. I speak of Earth, stillborn in a cradle. 
I shoved his head against the wall, cracking the reinforced hull plating from floor to ceiling. I speak of the Shadowburn Alrun, who mourn their stolen light. I started walking, his face leaving a deep gouge mark in our passage. I speak for the clipped Fordell, skies blackened and listless. I turned him around to face me as we walked. The lights continued to flicker off as much as on. I speak for the thousands of worlds, uncounted dead, more civilizations than I have years. I wrenched open yet another door and threw him through. I stopped for a moment, inspecting the equipment inside. Here are the one thing the entire galaxy of petulant, bickering children could agree upon. Nodding, I stepped inside and shoved the warped door back into its frame. He eyed the empty shelves, the turrets, and its controls. I made a costly bargain long ago. Because of it, they've all helped me in some way. I shoved him into the empty barrel and slammed the door shut. He could still hear me. I'd make sure of it. I have more technology packed into me than a capital warship. All for this task. His laughter echoed through the edges of the malformed cover. This can't kill me any more than anything else. I know that, I said. I poked and prodded the controls, aiming for nothing in particular. I smiled as an empty patch behind Andromeda came into view. But I know something you've long since forgotten. Oh, what is that? I chuckled as I smashed the launch button. In space, no one can hear you scream. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.